It is a great, big, beautiful day here at the Walt Disney World Resort. Welcome into episode 32 of Inside 300, presented by InsideTheMagic.com. I'm your host, Brian Perry, and while the weather is nice today, that wasn't the case earlier this week, when Magic Kingdom essentially turned into Disney World's third water park. We had flooding in Tomorrowland, Fantasyland, Frontierland. Heck, we even have footage of kids basically swimming through Liberty Square, so we'll get to that next. It is time to catch you up on everything you need to know about Disney parks in 300 seconds right now. Before we get to our swimming through Magic Kingdom story, we obviously need to start with the big news from Disney last night when the company stated that it would be making vaccinations for COVID-19 a requirement for all salary and non-union cast members. The strong stance comes as rates for the virus increase in Disney World's home state of Florida. The company is giving its employees 60 days to receive their first dosage. For all those scorching summer days that we dread in Orlando, there's occasionally a thunderstorm that provides a completely different experience when visiting Walt Disney World. That's what happened this week. Check out this unbelievable footage. No, that's not Typhoon Lagoon, Blizzard Beach, or the now deconstructed River Country, USA. May she rest in peace. But it's the Magic Kingdom. The footage comes courtesy of Cassie C. from the annual Passholder group on Facebook. She also sent over these pictures. This all took place outside of the Merida meet and greet location near the teacups. It's nice to see the kids making the most out of the storm. Over in Liberty Square, we've got essentially the same thing going on. And B provided this video. I personally have gotten stuck in a storm like this over at Islands of Adventure. And while in the moment it makes you contemplate every single dime you've spent that day to get into the park, it remains as one of the funniest memories I have either at Disney or Universal. Check out this picture back over by the Merida meet and greet. The kids are having fun, but something else caught my eye. What's this? Oh, that is a scooter heading right for the kid on his back. Check out the boy's sheer terror in his eyes. No word on if the scooter was speeding or even hydroplaning through the rain, but word is the kid is okay, I think. Honestly, we didn't get any reports of a scooter accident, so that's what we're going to go with. The high-end luxury department store Nordstrom is taking after many other retailers by selling Disney apparel to customers. This isn't unusual by any stretch, as we've seen it done by companies like H&M, Forever 21, and Uniqlo. Well, Nordstrom has figured out a way to stick out from its competitors by doing something uh, different. Just like the aforementioned stores, customers can visit the Nordstrom site to buy new Disney shirts, but that's not all. If you had the burning desire to instead buy, yep, second-hand Disney shirts, you can do it, and they cost twice as much money. That's right, step right up to the world's most expensive thrift store. Who needs Goodwill or Buffalo Exchange? And you can head to a luxury department store and pay as much as $150 for a used t-shirt. Look, I need to read the quote from the website here that really made me laugh. Here it is under the 2006 gray quote-unquote vintage shirt. This pre-owned piece has unique wear that adds to its appeal. No confirmation if a wash was included with your used shirt. For those unaware, you can buy your shirts new from Disney for legitimately half the price that Nordstrom is selling these for, or you can buy them from Target for a quarter of the price. If anyone can actually explain to me why you might be interested in spending $85 on a used Disney shirt from 2009, please let me know in the comments below. We've got our first big surprise regarding Disney World's Fab 50. Dante the Dog and Alebrije from the emotional roller coaster that was Coco will be getting one of the golden sculptures celebrating the resort's 50th anniversary. Coco, without a doubt, is worth receiving one of the interactive statues, as in my opinion, it's Pixar's best movie over the last 10 years, but Dante's lack of screen time makes the move relatively surprising. Dog behavior expert Caesar Milan made the announcement on Nat Geo's Instagram account. Anything that promotes dogs, I'm going to be a big fan of. That's 11 characters down, 39 to go. Wanted to make a quick note of the progress over in Tomorrowland. Check out this tremendous footage captured by an Inside 300 viewer who was kind enough to send it to us. Thank you, viewer. It's a great look at the progress on Tron from the vantage point of the greatest ride on property, the People Mover. Tron has made steady progress since construction resumed, though the highly anticipated opening date is still a mystery, unfortunately. 
That's going to do it for another episode of Inside 300 presented by InsideTheMagic.com. If you like what you saw, be sure to subscribe. Click that bell icon. This way you're notified every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday morning when we come to you with brand new episodes. I'm your host, Brian Perry. I will see you next time. And as always, bye-bye.